Pietro on behalf of the Boxing Voice. I'm here with acclaimed trainer, Mr. Sugar Hill himself. You're here for the Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano fight? Yes, I am. I'm here as a fan. That's it. Is this a layover on the way back from uh, Morecambe, England? All right, so look, this is what happened. I was on my way home from Morecambe, England, through Manchester Airport, connecting in Amsterdam. And when I got off the plane in Amsterdam, they told me that my ticket was canceled. So I don't know how I got canceled in flight. But anyway, they were trying to sort out how to get me to Detroit. It was getting too confusing. I was thinking Atlanta because I fly Delta only. So uh, I'm thinking Atlanta's the main hub, busiest airport. I can get there. But then I thought about it. I said, you know what? Just send me to, send me to New York. I'm going to these fights. And here I am. Nah, I flew into JFK. JFK. Yeah. It's all the same to me. All right, well, happy to have you here in uh, New York. Obviously, it was a huge win for you in England uh, with Tyson Fury. We were talking before about the prospects of him returning. You believe that he's going to stick by his word? I have to. All right. Listen, I, I believe what Tyson says. Tyson tells me, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to take this fight. Oh, we're going to let's train this day. Yeah, that's what we do. He said he's going to pick me up at a certain time. He does, so I believe him. Now, if the, Ju if, uh, if the Joshua Usyk winner, uh, the rematch, obviously, uh, if the winner calls out Tyson and there's a lot of money on the line and there's four title belts on the line, that's a difficult fight to say no to, is it not? I can't answer that because it's up to Tyson. So, if, you know, um, if he feels happy and comfortable, then I, as he stated in the, press co uh, the post press conference, then it's not a difficult decision. Got it. Listen, everything isn't always about money. This is true. Now, we spoke earlier, again, before the interview, about Tyson sitting down on his punches, what you brought to the table as a trainer ahead of the second fight with Wilder. Uh, we saw a very different uh, version of Tyson Fury under your tutelage. Uh, is that something that you're going to continue doing, you know, with, with other fighters? I mean, obviously, you had great success with Adonis Stevenson. You know, um, who, who else are you training and, and uh, what other things are you going to be doing now if Tyson does end up staying retired? Well, I like golfing. So you see, I got my golf shirt on. You know, and that one. Head, got, got my golf glove with me right in my back pocket just in case I am uh, find somewhere I can hit some balls that maybe off the, the roof of one of these buildings, these tall buildings here, see how far I can hit it. I bet I can get over 300 yards uh, hitting off one of these buildings. So, uh, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, enjoying the moment. Still training fighters, not to mention any names or anything like that, but uh, working with fighters, staying busy in the gym, doing stuff. And uh, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, you know, whatever Tyson does is, is what Tyson does, and I respect his decisions, and I'm very happy that the, that the decision that he's making makes him happy. That's all that really counts for me as well as when I'm, when I'm training him. So as, as far as Tyson Fury and other fighters, like how do I train them, I just train them to make them the best of what they can be. I don't try to change anybody's style, but I watch them and I can kind of understand what they're thinking and then I can just teach them through that way. And, and Tyson Fury is uh, you know, an example of how I've done that. Obviously for the Deontay Wilder fight, he didn't fight it like he did uh, Dillian White, but he has those styles that he can change into. What was the difference in training? I mean, you can divulge the plan now, I hope, in terms of how you approached the... <laughs> well, you just said, you just said... We only got two plans. I was one, that's two, so now everybody, I can't tell how it went down. Well, you said he's retiring, right? So you could divulge it now. I can't let everybody just go out there and use it like that. All right, fair enough. Patent on it. Fair enough. Crunk, chicken hill patent. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask you about the the, the crunk gym in a, in a second. Um, but let me get your opinion on the heavyweight division right now. And I'm going to throw some names and some matchups. And just I'd like you to tell me what you think. Usyk, Usyk, Joshua, too. Interesting. Next. Interesting, I mean, who you got and why. It's just interesting for me. I don't do – actually, I don't do predictions. You don't do predictions. Nah. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't let, let me ask you to you this. Let me ask you to you this way. But yes, why do you, don't you do predictions? I don't do predictions because I don't know what's going to happen. So when I'm watching and when I'm preparing to watch it, it's just it's just my best guess, and all I can do is just hope for the best of this fighter and the best of that fighter. So right, it's not really fair to say, oh, he's going to beat him because if, if the game plan is there and that one fighter doesn't feel that well on that night, then it's just 
that's just what happens because I understand boxing. All right, so there was an offer on the table. I don't remember or I don't know how serious it was by Tyson Fury to have you and him train Joshua for this rematch with Usyk. If you were training Joshua based on the last fight with Usyk, what are the kind of things that you think that he needs to work on? Then that's like telling them what I would do if I, before I even do it. Like, ain't that something like that? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you keeping these secrets uh, guarded. That's fine. I told you it was patent. They was okay. patent. Uh, fair enough. Let let's let me ask you about Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker that was recently announced. Your yes. Give me your thoughts as a fan, if not as a trainer. I, as a fan, I think that's a good fight. Uh, you got Joseph Parker with experience, and you got a, a young fighter coming up. And uh, this is like one of those changing of the guards, like fight the older guy, the former champion, to beat this guy. This is where this is where you know will help you out, or it'll make you or break you. And for Joseph Parker, who's actually gotten better in his last fight with Chisora, for my my uh, my assessment, he's gotten better and uh, showed lots of improvement. It's a very interesting fight, and it's uh, it's one of those that I just want to be sitting there watching it, having me some popcorn, yeah. popcorn and lemonade. There you go. A uh, fight that might take place closer to home. You're from the Midwest, Michigan. Apparently this fight might take place in Ohio uh, because Don King has won the purse bid for it. Daniel Bryant uh, against, um, sorry, Bryant versus, uh, da sorry, da Daniel Dubois against Trevor Bryant. What's wrong with me? Daniel Dubois, Trevor Bryant. You just put their names together. Like if, yeah, I, like yeah. if I said uh, Johnny Coffee. Yeah. Because I say that a lot. Yeah, exactly. That means two guys standing there not really doing nothing. Daniel Dubois, Trevor Bryant. Uh, so it might sound bad, but I've really never seen Trevor Bryant fight, so it's kind of not fair for me to even talk about that. Listen, so I'm a boxing. I'm all the way into boxing, but I don't watch yeah. boxing too much on TV or show interest in it unless it's something that I'm, I want to see. Like, I have to be interested in it. It has to be an interest for me, and the interest for me is, is watching two fighters or fighters that can think. I like to see those kind of guys. So if a fighter ain't really thinking... For me, I don't really watch it that much. I watch it, you know, with uh, with people casually, but it's not something I'm running to the TV to watch. So, I, to be fair, I don't know. I don't know how Trevor Bryant uh, his style of fighting versus Joe Joyce. Fair enough. Or Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois in this you game. Don't catch that. <laughs> Try to flip it on you. See. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, yeah. So, uh, two two more things. One, are, are you interested at all in the Bivol Canelo fight? Just uh, sink of the mind. It should be should be a very good atmosphere. But do you think it's going to be a competitive fight? Yes, two top two top uh, boxers. Very good. And different. Canelo's moving up in the weight division. So yeah, it's a competitive fight. And um, lastly, uh, I did talk about Adana Stevenson earlier, former Kronk fighter, uh, whose like I said, game was um, I would say improved greatly under the Kronk gym. Uh, have you at all been in touch with, with Adonis? I know he had that 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 injury at the, the end of his career. Yeah, we text and talk. He just texted me right before the Tyson fight. So yeah, we've been uh, we've been in contact, and he's doing well. He's driving. He's made a, a tremendous tremendous gains in his injury, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. Well, that's great to hear, Coach. Thank you so much. This is Maestro on behalf of the Boxing Voice. Thank you so much, Sugar Hill. Enjoy the fight week the video feel free to hit the like subscribe and share as always if you want to support us to the next level head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace